Thank you for that. We we'll look forward to that report. Mr. Faison, it's wonderful to have you before the committee. Thank you. <clears throat> Good morning, Chairman Mikowski, Ranking Member Manchin, and other members of the committee. My name is Jay Faison. I'm the founder of ClearPath. ClearPath is a 501c3 organization that develops and advances conservative clean energy policies. I started ClearPath because I thought our national energy policy debate had become drill baby drill versus keep it in the ground, and I thought there might be a better way. I found the 2018 National Climate Assessment deeply sobering. Forest fires are one example. On average, the annual amount of area burned has increased fourfold in the last 30 years. PG&E, one of the nature's, nation's largest utilities, has declared bankruptcy as a result of their liability for recent fires. DUD's report on a changing climate, released last month, showed that 53 of the 79 military installations study in the, studied in the report are currently affected by floods and other impacts. Given the risks of climate change, what could be a bigger priority for DOE's national energy laboratories than developing the next generation of affordable clean energy technologies? Heavy industry is now responding. Most major utilities have ambitious emission reductions goals. Senior executives from Southern, Shell, and BP are beginning to link future bonuses to emissions targets. These actions make it clear that large energy companies understand that a low carbon energy future is inevitable. Some would argue that we have the technologies we need to solve for climate change. First, it's important to recognize that a molecule of CO2 emitted on the other side of the world has the same impact as one emitted here. Since 2000, coal power generation has, in China has nearly quadrupled. Bloomberg reports that China's plans for new coal plants roughly equal the size of the entire U.S. coal fleet. Abroad, China is financing another 100 gigawatts of coal in at least 27 other countries. So we have a choice. We can bet that the Chinese and Indians will close recently built plants at the expense of economic growth, or we can develop, demonstrate, and export U.S.-based emission control technology. Second, we should not put all of our eggs into one basket of technologies. It is unknown how far batteries and other forms of star storage can fill in for renewables when the sun isn't shining and the wind isn't blowing. This is where the Department of Energy comes in. Many people are well aware of the SunShot initiative launched eight years ago. It set ambitious cost reduction targets for solar panels for the year 2020 and achieved its goals three years ahead of schedule. Most people are not aware of how DOE made the shale gas, revolution, shale gas revolution possible. Decades of R&D, coupled with a $10 billion alternative production tax credit, yielded breakthroughs in horizontal drilling, combined cycle turbines, diamond drill bits, and 3D imaging that resulted in a 28% emissions decline. That same ingenuity that produced the shale boom can make gas fully clean. Last May, a company called Net Power successfully demonstrated a zero emission natural gas technology that could transform the global energy sector. This new technology could capture all of its emissions at effectively zero cost. RPE and Bill Gates backed QuidNet is developing long, long duration storage solutions that could expand renewables. New scale, a next generation nuclear technology could have demonstration reactors operational at Idaho National Lab in three to four years. These are the type of programs that will make a big dent in this enormous global problem. The last Congress to accomplish more in clean tech innovation than people think. Successes include incentives for carbon capture, renewables and advanced nuclear, record investments in R&D and streamline permitting for advanced nuclear and hydropower. But what exactly are we shooting for? What does success look like? I'm a strong advocate for big, ambitious goals that deliver a full toolbox of clean and affordable energy solutions, smart investments in moonshot goal programs that deliver low-cost, high-performing, clean technology from basic research all the way through demonstration. Let's create stronger financing incentives to commercialize cutting-edge companies and deploy these technologies globally. Let's streamline regulation to get clean energy online quickly. 
Ambitious bipartisan cooperation on innovation is essential and attainable. In fact, it is the only chance we have, our nation will have, if it's going to play a significant role in the global solution. Thank you again for this opportunity, and I look forward to the discussion. Thank you so much for your contribution.